Good afternoon, class. For today's science lesson, we're going to learn about tsunamis. Oh, man. Do we have to? Class, what you're going to learn in this lesson could save your life someday. Can anyone tell me what a tsunami is? A tsunami is a big wave. That's right, Jasmine. Actually, it's a series of ocean waves that can affect coastal areas like beaches and bays. Tsunami is from the Japanese word for harbor wave. Mr. King, what causes tsunamis? Well, Sandy, tsunamis are commonly caused by earthquakes beneath the sea floor. Class, I know you just finished your music lesson with Ms. Tempo, and while I'm sure that was fun, I need you to stop fiddling around with your instruments and pay attention to our lesson on tsunamis. Now, um, where was I? Oh, yes. Way out in the ocean, tsunami waves can be thousands of miles long and hundreds of miles apart. And in the very deep ocean, the waves can travel as fast as a jet plane, up to 600 miles an hour. Can people on a ship way out in the ocean feel the waves? That's a good question, Chloe. Tsunami waves cannot be felt or seen by ships at sea. The waves of a tsunami in the ocean are small, maybe only a few inches high. So what's everybody all shook up about? Thank you. Thank you very much. Rocky, that's quite enough. Once a tsunami starts approaching land, that's when it becomes dangerous. The first wave slows down in shallow water, causing the waves behind it to bunch up together, which makes the waves taller. So a small wave only 12 inches high in the deep ocean may grow to a monster wave 100 feet high, or many times taller than buildings as it sweeps over the shore. But usually it's more like a fast rising flood with very strong currents. Tsunamis can cause a lot of damage on the shore, wiping out houses, cars, and hurting people. Once an earthquake happens beneath the ocean, how long does it take for the waves to reach the shore? Well, it depends. There are two types of tsunamis. There are local or near-source tsunamis that can happen from nearby earthquakes and which take only a few minutes to reach the coastal areas. The second kind of tsunami is a distant-source tsunami occurring from an earthquake hundreds of miles away, and this can take 3 to 22 hours to reach coastal areas. Is there any kind of warning for a tsunami? I'm glad you asked, John. The National Weather Service has two warning centers, the Pacific Tsunami Warning Center in Hawaii and the West Coast and Alaska Tsunami Warning Center in Alaska. The scientists at these warning centers can figure out when a distant tsunami will arrive and will notify emergency officials who will tell people in coastal areas to evacuate or leave the area if they know a tsunami is coming. So if we're at the beach, like now, or near the coast, how do we know if there's a local or near source tsunami? There are several warning signs, and this is the most important part of today's lesson. When you're at the beach and you see the water receding or pulling back from the shore, that's a key sign. So if you see an unusual disappearance of water, immediately move inland, away from the ocean, and head for higher ground. Another sign is when you're near the ocean and you feel a very strong earthquake. We're talking about an earthquake that knocks people off their feet or where you can count shaking for 20 seconds or longer. If either one of these happens, you want to evacuate inland to higher ground right away. You may even hear a loud ocean roar. In each of these cases, keep calm and immediately move to higher ground, ideally 100 feet above sea level, which is as tall as a 10-story building, or move at least one mile inland away from river valleys. And if you hear about a tsunami warning, never go to the coast to watch for it. Remember, tsunamis can be very dangerous. Well, that's it for today's science lesson. Okay, raise your claws if you now know what to do for a tsunami. <laughs> Great. Now, who wants to tell me what they've learned about tsunamis and what we're supposed to do? Okay, Chloe.
Well, no. 